Good morning once again. Um, we have Dr. Carrie Ciro with us from the College of Allied Health to present on ergonomics, uh, workstation cramping your style. Uh, this is a great topic. I think that we can all use reminders and those helpful tips that she will present. Dr. Ciro, I will go ahead and let you get started. Thank you, Kylie and uh, Kaylee, and thanks for uh, asking me to present today. Hello, everyone. I'm in a position now where I can't see your faces, but Kaylee is gonna help me with any questions you might have as we go along. Feel free to ask questions as we move along. We don't have to wait until the end of the session. So I'm gonna jump right in with, is the workplace station cramping your style? And, okay, I'm not moving in my PowerPoint. Here we go, let me see here. There we go, okay. So the objectives today are that we're really gonna kind of get around the idea that the areas of pain or tingling that you have are usually uh, related to a specific work task that you're doing. And so I'm gonna help you think about um, work task and, and how though some of those tasks may create some of the problems. Then we're gonna review some workstation ergonomics in a variety of different positions because long story short, it's better if you move and it's better if you're in different positions throughout the day. Um, and as you can see from the picture at the right, the body's changing, but please take a look at the arms and hands. They're not changing much. So we'll, we'll uh, review some things related to that as well. And then I'm gonna end with some micro breaks and what that means and how you can employ some of those at your workstation. So the first thing I wanna talk about is just workstation pain in general. And I say workstation, sometimes the pain is from things we're doing at our home, but many times it's from what we're doing at work. And those can usually fall into three different categories. One is uh, a nerve is irritated because it's getting compressed. And the most telltale sign that it's a nerve is that there's tingling or numbness associated with wherever your body part is, is hurting. Um, you can also feel weakness, achiness, and sometimes even shooting pain when your nerve is compressed. Um, we're going to, you know, some of the reasons the nerve gets compressed is that we're resting on it. So for example, you see me with my elbow on the table, that's going to really irritate my elbow if I do that for long periods of time. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Another thing that tip is typical to happen at the workstation is our tendons get inflamed and you hear the word tendonitis, which really just means inflammation of the tendons. Um, generally what that feels like is achy, or sharp pain around the joints. And so uh, tendons attach our muscles to our bones. So because our muscles lay in between joints, it's usually tendons are around joints. So if, you're, if you feel pain or you feel sharp pain or tingling or numbness uh, in your uh, joints themselves, then that's often a sign of some tendons that are inflamed or swollen. And then the last thing that's very typical to happen is muscle tightness. And we're gonna talk a bit about why that happens. But if you reach up and grab your, your upper back or neck and you feel knots, that means that the muscle's actually shortened and it's tight. And then other muscles respond by elongating. And I'm gonna show you some examples of what that looks like. So muscle tightness, again, can feel like achy, sharp pain. It can also feel like shooting pain. And it can also shoot pain into areas that you may think are the problems. Like for example, you could have a tight muscle up here that shoots into your elbow and you think your elbow hurts, but it's really your muscle. So those are the three things we're gonna kind of uh, rotate around today. And these three things are caused by mostly the same sets of behaviors at our workstation. One is resting on a surface for too long. I'm going to show you some examples of that. Maintaining a position for too long. We are not meant to be rigid bodies that don't move around all day. So if we maintain a position for too long, it can cause problems. The opposite of that is constantly moving your body. If you do a lot of repetitive motion, then that can also cause that. So I hope you're already seeing, you get it if you stay in one position too long, you get it if you're too repetitive. So somewhere in the middle, the just right spot is a balance between positioning and repetitive motion. Uh, sitting for long periods of time, which really is just maintaining a position for too long. Uh, an inappropriate height of your desk or screen. We're gonna talk about that. That contributes to some of these aches and pains. 
um, an inappropriate keyboard. Some people need different types of keyboards. Or I can tell you, anybody typing on a laptop for long periods of time is going to have a problem because the laptop is so condensed and you kind of have to move your arms in like this in order to type. That's usually going to cause some problems over time. And then the last couple of things have to do with your legs and your back. Uh, not having good knee clearance under your chair. So if you're sitting in your chair and the back of your knee pushes right up against the chair, that can cause problems. So you need two to three fingers width or distance between your knee and the back of the chair. And then uh, another thing that can cause problems is not having good foot support or your feet not resting on the ground. So we're going to talk about ways to manage uh, those types of workstation behaviors as we go along. Now, this is the everybody join in part of uh, the session. So let's take a look at this guy stooped over his desk. Now, we all recognize that's not a good position, but I hope we also recognize it's it may be a little bit of an exaggeration, but we all when we are intensely working, we tend to kind of crouch into the work, lean towards the monitor. And what happens is that all the muscles in our front of our body, they shorten. And then as you can see, my back concaving, all the muscles in the back of my body get elongated. So almost all of the problems that we have in our workstation are related to some parts of the body shortening, some parts of the body elongating. And so if we spend time in these shortened positions, we need to make sure that we spend time in the opposite elongated position. So join me for a minute. If you just kind of Put your elbows up to your side and your hands kind of at your head level, and then just kind of lean up. You may feel several parts of your body going, oh my goodness, I feel that stretch. My back between my shoulder blades, my chest feels like it's stretching. If I poke my head up, I feel the front of my neck stretching. And so that's a great posture to have or to get into during those micro breaks that we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. So again, most of the problems we have are related to muscles getting short and muscles getting elongated. So let's start with some uh, the, the back pain portion of this. So back pain is caused by a lot of different things. The first thing of which we just talked about, which is poor posture, that slouching. Um, some people sit on one foot or sit on both feet. And that's okay as long as you maintain upright posture. But if you lean to one side and you're typing, you know, with your foot underneath you, then that creates back strain because you're in a tilted position. So not keeping that upper part of your body relatively straight is going to cause different types of back problems. The other thing that can cause different types of back problems is when the screen is too high. So if you're doing this to look at the top of your screen, we're gonna talk about ways to, to minimize that because once you tilt your head back, then you're causing uh, shortening in the back of your neck and shortening in your back and that can lead to back spasm and back pains. The other thing that is, is common is that we sometimes we have one computer screen, sometimes we have two or three, and that is great because it allows us to do a lot of extra work. But the thing that it can contribute to is if I'm facing one screen and then I twist my back this way to look at this one or my back this way to look at this one, then that twisting and turning to look at multiple screens can be problematic for our back. And the final thing that can contribute to back pain is just not having any back support. If you're sitting in the at the very edge of your chair, um, your back doesn't have support when you're sitting. So it's really nice to be in a chair that allows you to kind of back up into it with a nice pillow in the small of your back. Sometimes a pillow in between your shoulder blades helps remind you to keep your shoulders back instead of scrunched forward. So let's look at some strategies to uh, minimize some of those problems that we may have. So I think we have all pretty familiar with the fact that we're starting to see people stand at their desk. There's a, a new campaign that sitting is the new smoking um, that we're, we're finding that sitting in, in for long periods of time causes many, many health conditions. And even if you're sitting in the perfect posture, like you see this person here, you don't want to do that all day long. 
you want to find some different positions to work on that are comfortable for you. One can be standing and you see somebody standing. Also note where his screen is, his neck is not tilted back to see the screen. Um, and that his arms are in the same position as he's in when he's sitting, okay? Another uh, variation of standing is standing on one leg because if you stand on both feet for a long period of time, that can be hard on your back too. So it's nice to be able to shift your weight from one surface to one leg to the other. Some people do that by standing on a mat, soft mat, and then elevating their foot onto a footrest for some periods of time. But the key is, is that you're, you're dynamic, you're changing uh, your sitting or standing position. The important thing too is uh, when you're standing, and if you have a standing desk, make sure that when you sit, everything comes down because it all needs to keep you in the same position in terms of your trunk, where your arms are in space when going for that keyboard. So um, need to make sure that that's in place as well. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Another fun thing we're seeing around the office is at people sitting on exercise balls, balls or exercise chairs. And so there are benefits to this and there are drawbacks as well. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about those. So the key reason that we started thinking this could be a good idea is that by when you're sitting on the ball and you're, any slight movement requires your stomach and your back to hold you in place. So you're actually getting some core exercise all day long. And it seemed like, well, how could that ever be bad? That's great. Well, one thing it's difficult for you to do that all day, your muscles will get tired of trying to hold you in place and that can actually also lead to some uh, back pain. The other things that some studies have outlined that it may not necessarily be better for your back on the, in the long term than sitting in a chair, uh, sitting on the balls can actually cause some spinal shrinkage. So there isn't any uh, evidence that says this is the kind of chair you should use. If anything, I think you should think of it as a tool in your toolbox, that if there's periods of the day that you wanna pull out a ball, pull out the ball, but then also have times of the day when you're sitting uh, in a chair. And I think what's also really key to, to look at in these pictures is even though they're both sitting on chair or balls, their elbows are still in a relaxed, flexed position. So you need to make sure that the ball is not too low so if it was too low, your elbows might be bent and you might be having to reach up to your workstation. That'll create more problems in different areas. So we still need to maintain good workstation behavior with our arms. And we're going to get to that in just a couple of minutes. So we're going to go through um, some series of pain at different levels. And I'm going to talk about kind of what can cause those. And then we're gonna kind of look at the workstation in general and kind of think about some good tips for stay, staying in a good place. So wrist pain is a very common thing to, for people to experience at the workstation. Um, if you think about somebody who's typing, they're often keeping their wrist in one position for a long time. Ideally, their wrists are staying stable but and their fingers are moving versus the wrists moving and the fingers moving. The other thing I wanna point out though, is that the muscles that move your fingers are down here in your forearm and they cross over your wrist. So if you're, if you're using your fingers a lot, the tendons are actually right here. So if they get inflamed from uh, typing for long, long periods, then that can create wrist pain from your fingers moving just because of where our muscles are located. So we have to think about that too. One thing that uh, can really bother me from time to time is the mouse. It, so if your mouse is kind of over to the side, um, when you're moving it up and down, or if you're clicking the mouse a lot, at the end of the day, you may feel pain in your wrist. You may feel uh, pain in your thumb. You may feel pain in your shoulder because your arm is out to the side more during the day. So that can also contribute to problems. And then the last thing that can cause wrist pain is kind of repetitively turning the forearm or repetitively twisting the wrist and the forearm. And those are less likely to be seen uh, when you're sitting at a computer, 
but they're very likely to be done in other environments where you're using your arms uh, in ways to like, you know, pick up files, those sorts of things. So just in general, these are sort of some of the things that can lead to wrist pain. We're gonna move up the body here and talk about elbow pain. Mm -hmm. um, so movements or actions that can contribute to that pain are like we talked about earlier, resting the elbow on a solid surface. And if you do that for too long, you'll feel like your funny bone's been hit. And that's actually the ulnar nerve coming across the back of your uh, elbow. And that can lead to what we call cubital uh, tunnel syndrome. We've heard of carpal tunnel, but cubital tunnel happens at the elbow. So we wanna minimize the amount of time we rest anything on a solid surface. And that can also include your wrist. Some people talk about uh, uh, kind of resting your wrist more on your palm than on the wrist itself. Because if you're resting on the wrist itself, then you probably have your fingers too high and then you're gonna have uh, a long position or a long time with your wrists in an upward position. Now, what does that have to do the elbow, you might be saying? So the, 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 the muscles that bring your wrist up are connected up here at your elbow. So if you spend a lot of time moving your wrist back and forth or really gripping something tight, then that causes the elbow to hurt on the inside or the outside. Those are both types of tendonitis. Another thing that can cause elbow pain is just holding your elbow in a flexed position, like when you're talking on the phone. Uh, you know, I know we've all had experiences. We've been on our cell phone a long time and our elbow probably starts to hurt. So using speaker phones, using headphones, those sorts of things can help if you're on phones for a long period of time. Uh, and then we've kind of already been alluding to the fact that moving the wrist or the elbow, both of them, will cause elbow pain because of where those uh, wrist or wrist muscles are. Before we leave this slide, I want you to take a look at that picture of the uh, how somebody's resting on their wrist and the angle that that causes uh, for their uh, wrist. Their wrist is in an up position. So the, the, the angle that we would look for is the wrist to be as neutral as positive, not as much bend so that your, your wrist is resting in a neutral position and then your fingers are the only things that are working. Okay, and finally, I wanted to hit on shoulder pain. And shoulder pain can be caused by a lot of different things because our body dictates where our shoulder will be at any given time. If you are in a slouch position forward or if you're in a slouch position back, your shoulder is gonna work harder to get to your workstation. So not having an upright posture can be uh, uncomfortable for your shoulders. Or in the picture, you see an example of her shoulder is having to hold itself up and away in order to reach her mouth. So the shoulder should be in next to the body and that will prevent uh, the shoulder from getting tight on the upper part of the inside of the shoulder. So what can we do about these things? I've talked about wrist, elbow, and shoulder pain. And this is a slide you've seen in a million different variations, I'm sure. But let's just walk through some of this and let's, let's talk about um, what we should be looking for. And I will, this caveat is in the kind of the purple star that all of our bodies are different and all of our bodies as we approach the desk will look different. And so it really is important to find what works best for you in terms of individualizing what I'm talking about to your body and to your desk. But these are some general principles you should think about following. I wanna start with the monitor. So the top of the screen should be at eye level. So for my eyeballs, that screen should be here and down. It shouldn't be where I have to tilt my head up at all and especially if you have glasses or you wear readers, you don't wanna be where you're looking at your screen like this because you can see what that does to my neck. It's gonna cause pain in my neck. The other thing is that screen, and this could also be dependent on your vision, should not be more than about 18 to 24 inches away from your face. So if you have a ruler, this is a good time to take a look at how far away am I from the screen? 
and my vision is not as good as I'd like it to be. Sometimes I'm on the shorter end of that. Sometimes it's a good idea for me to increase the font size so that I'm not looking at things like this. Um, now I just kind of want you to notice the stacking of the body. The head is on top of the shoulders or on top of the neck, which is on top of the shoulders, which is on top of the back which is on top of the lower back. The lower back has a sway in it, so it won't be flat, it should be swayed, and then it sits on the hips. So what you're looking for is really good alignment there. And like I said, these, this is best practice. It may be that, well, and it is best practice to also to change these positions, get up, move around, stretch, so you're not in this rigid position all day. But to the extent that you can kind of keep all structures loaded on top of one another, that's really best for your body. Then as we move down the legs, you see where we're talking about, I made mention of your knee should not be compressed right against the chair. You should have two or three fingers width distance. If you don't, what you may feel if that chair is right up against your knee, your leg below your knee can become numb because you're resting a nerve right on the chair. Compressing or resting on body parts can contribute to problems. And then as you work the way down the feet, you see that the feet are resting on the floor. They're flat on the floor. If it feels good for the feet to be inclined, that's okay too. So that's a little bit based on what feels good to you but resting on a solid surface is the key. Now let's go up to that, to that arm a bit. So take a look at that elbow. I know it's not quite uh, showing as well, but you get the sense of where it is. So the elbow needs to be, and I'm gonna kind of turn my body this way. It should never be bent more than this. So this is 90 degrees. If you go up, up, up too much, then this elbow's bent and it's causing you to pinch your nerve in your elbow or it's causing your muscles to be tight. Your elbow can be here to about here, but that's really the range. It says 90 to 100 degrees. This is about where you can be and expect to not have elbow problems. I'll tell you this though, I sit at 90 degrees and when I do with my elbow at 90 degrees, sometimes I have pain. I'm really better about 110 than I am at 90. So when you have to do that, then the keyboard has to come down to this level instead of it being up here. So you may need a tray that pulls out. You may need to really lower your chair so that you can achieve getting that elbow stretched out just a little bit more. Now, as we're working our way from the elbow, we see the wrist. Note again that the wrist is not upright. The wrist is in kind of a neutral position and it's, it's resting or floating, and then your fingers are doing the moving. Um, it's also important where we think about having document monitors. Instead of having things that you're typing from be on the table itself, which causes you to have your head down while you're typing, it's better to have a, a document monitor or document holder so that it's upright and you're typing with your neck up. I see there's a there is a question in the okay. chat. Um, do you have suggestions if you sit back in your chair and do not have two to three fingers distance from your knee? Okay, that's a great question. Thank you for that. So if I'm going to sit back like this and my knees are against the thing, I need to bring my feet up with something. So I need to have some kind of platform to put my foot on that's higher so that my feet are resting on a surface. And that's why they have the foot things that allow you to go up and down. So you could put it in a position where you can be laid back, but your feet are supported. I hope that answers the question. If not, please email me and I'll talk you through some more. One more really quick. Okay. Um, would you be able to send a link uh, to the foot rest that you recommend and what they look like? Sure. Be happy to or you could send it to um, Lindsay or myself or both of us and we can send it up in a follow-up email so that way everybody can have them. Okay, that sounds great. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Well, I am trying to. Okay. 
So the last thing I wanted to talk to you a little about, bit about was micro breaks. And this is kind of new terminology that's getting floated out there. That's really just taking two or three minutes away uh, at least every 30 minutes or an hour. And they can be very short. It can be consider getting up and getting a drink and going to bet the bathroom as a break from your work. Take a moment to say hi, engage with your colleagues. Um, we're all aware that people have been talking about how we can do stretches at the workplace. And this is also a great idea. So there's some stretches here, like tilting your head side to side. Do those slowly without you know, any jerky movements. And I'm sure when you do them, you'll feel, I feel mine's real tight on this side, um, turning your head. You should be able to see behind you, your neck motion should be good enough that you can see directly behind you. If it's not, then your neck is too tight. We talked a bit about raising your arms up over your head and the feelings that that may, that may come from feeling kind of tight there. Uh, standing up and bending over backwards is a, is a really great thing to do every 30 to 60 minutes. Just get in there and really hold that stretch. I'm sure that's not the most beautiful position for you to see me in, but it's really a crucial one for staying stretched out. Um, there's nothing at all wrong with taking a minute to meditate at your desk, clear your mind, um, relax your body. And then another thing people are talking quite a bit about are eye rests. So for 20 seconds, you look away from your computer, at least 20 feet away um, every 20 minutes. And that helps to reduce eye strain from looking so, so close uh, to your computer. I just wanted to uh, let you know that there is a, a, a site on our for OUHSC for looking at ergonomics and there's some ergonomic stretches that are available. And I, if you are having pain at your workstation, I do wanna uh, advocate for you to talk to people about that. Uh, you, what I'd ask you to do is pay attention to the tasks that you're doing when the pain begins so that when you, you go to a doctor or you go to a therapist, that you're able to identify those things that are hurting you. Physicians can help with medications that can reduce inflammation in that area. And then occupational and physical therapists treat the specific issues you're having like tendonitis and assess how to make your workstation better for you. So if you're having problems, don't live with them. There's lots of people that can help. Um, so with that, I see, think I see something in the chat. So I'll go, can you send me it? Yes, okay. All right, are there any other questions that I can help answer? I appreciate the time you took to tune in today. I hope it's helpful and feel free to contact me if you have any other questions. Thank you, Dr. Ciro, for your time. Um, greatly appreciated this. This was informational and I learned a few new things as well. Uh, I was like, oh, I didn't know that. So this was very informational and we greatly appreciate your time. Absolutely. Have a wonderful uh, weekend, everybody. <laughs>